Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be proving an inequality. X, Y, Z are non-negative real numbers, and we are supposed to prove that the quantity X plus Y times the quantity X plus Z times the quantity Y plus Z is greater than or equal to 8X, Y, Z. So we can just go ahead and distribute the left-hand side to see what's happening. And then we're going to be getting something like this if we do that. This should give us x squared y plus xy squared plus x squared z plus xz squared. When we mu multiply the whole thing and then y squared z plus yz squared. And then of course we're also going to be getting something like xyz from here. And that's going to come two times. And when you consider the xyz on the right hand side multiply by 8, we can just go ahead and simplify this expression. And we can also group these together. So we're going to get something like xy times x plus y, and then xz times x plus z. And of course, this is by no means a proof. I'm just trying to show you what happens if we assume that this is true and where this is going to lead us. Obviously, all these steps are reversible, so you can just go ahead and work backwards. So now we get something like this. And here, it might be helpful to assume that you know x plus y plus z is equal to something like s so that we can write all of these in terms of s. Like for example, x plus y would be s minus z, this would be s minus y, and this would be s minus x. And then by distributing and replacing s with x plus y plus z, this is going to lead you to an inequality that I proved a while ago, and it kind of looks like this. x plus y plus z multiplied by one over x plus one over y plus one over z, is greater than or equal to 9. Obviously here xyz cannot be 0, but you can basically modify it to fit our problem. But that's so long, right? Don't you think? So let's go ahead and do something much nicer. And here is the second, the best method in my opinion. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with something like this. Square root of x minus square root of y squared obviously when you square something it cannot be negative if x and y are real numbers and this is well defined right so in in our case x and y are non-negative real numbers so this is all good but when you expand it you get x minus 2 root xy plus y is greater than or equal to zero and if you isolate x plus y this is what you get now if you manipulate this a little bit like divide both sides by two you get what's known as AMGM inequality. So we do know that if we have a bunch of non-negative real numbers, their arithmetic mean is always going to be greater than or equal to their geometric mean. With three numbers, this looks like x plus y plus z divided by three is greater or equal to the cube root of x, y, z. And if you work this out by substitution, you're going to be getting something that we used in a previous problem. Remember the Putnam adapted problem that's the inequality that you're going to be getting. But that's not the point. Let's go ahead and come back to this and see how we can use it. So I do know that x plus y is greater than or equal to 2 times the square root of xy if x and y are non-negative real numbers. And of course, I can do the same thing with x and z and then y and z. Okay? Pretty much we can repeat this over and over. Now, what do you notice? If you look at the original problem, on the left-hand side, we do have the product of what's on the left-hand side here, right? So that would make sense if you multiply these together. And a good reason we can do that is x, y, z are non-negative, so it's allowed. And when we do, we get, oops, I'm supposed to write the two-way sums. So I get x plus y multiplied by x plus z multiplied by y plus z. And if I go ahead and multiply the right hand side, 2 times 2 times 2 is going to give me 8. And let's go ahead and multiply these expressions together. Now one way to do this is consider that square root of xy can be written as square root of x times square root of y. This is the square root of x times square root of z. And then we get the square root of y times the square root of z. When notice that when you multiply square root of x by itself, you're going to be getting x from here. So it's going to look like this. x plus y times x plus z times y plus z is greater than or equal to 8xyz, which is what we were trying to prove. And this brings us to the end of this 
video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.